oh, what I wouldn't have given to have been sitting across from Oprah when she said it. If I could have possessed Diana Nyad's brain for five quick minutes, Oprah would have never needed another fad diet again because I'd have torn that fat bitch a new asshole so big she could pass a whole turkey through it. I feel like Travolta in Pulp Fiction. It would have been worth her saying it just so I could have been there to answer it. Now, before I go any further, let me take a minute to explain the situation to the six atheists that haven't heard it yet. Oprah, as you may know, is a vile, contemptible, immoral, melon-headed scut. She's made billions by shilling for every pseudoscientific snake oil salesman she can find. She gives demonstrably incorrect medical advice to the least educated people in our society. And she pretends to be a philanthropist when companies donate shit to her audience. But she's a Christian. Because there's nothing in the Bible about pilfering from the poor and lying, is there? Is there? And what's more, she's one of those bitchy, holier-than-thou, high-and-mighty Christians with superiority complex. I believe the technical term for those type of Christians is Christians. So last week, she's interviewing Diana Nyad, who is an exceptional human being in pretty much any way you care to define exceptional. She's the one that recently became the first woman to swim from Cuba to Florida without a shark cage and did it at the age of 64. And this is only the latest in a long list of incredible shit she's done in her life. She swam all the way around the island of Manhattan. She was the first woman to ever swim from Bermuda to Florida. And she's an atheist. So anyway, Oprah has her own television channel now because what's the point in making the money if you can't piss it all away in an ill-advised, hyper-self-indulgent debacle of a business strategy? And among the many shows nobody's watching over there is Oprah's Super Soul Sunday. Now, as you can tell from the witless pun in the title, it's a show about faith, so Oprah doesn't take long to broach the subject. In the opening minutes of the interview, she points out that Nyad identifies herself as an atheist. So Nyad launches immediately into that semi-apologetic, I'm an atheist, but that doesn't mean we can't be friends response. Now, I hate to hear this crap, but I understand why so many prominent atheists say it. She's basically saying, I don't believe in your fairy tales, but it's okay if you do. This is basically a cultural necessity in our country, which is a sad damn shame. There's no other demographic of belief that feels obligated to publicly apologize for existing all the time. But ain't that just America for you? Anyway, she's in the middle of saying something along the lines of, I'm an atheist, but when I sit on a beach with my Christian and Muslim and Buddhist friends and we look up at the night sky, we all share the same awe and wonder and appreciation for the universe and for all the people that came before us and all the people yet to come. But she can't get all the way through it because by now Oprah's gone 42 consecutive seconds without bloviating and that is her limit. So as soon as Nyad starts talking about awe and wonder, Oprah cuts in with an interjection that was all but scientifically formulated to be maximally condescending. Well, then I don't consider you an atheist, she says. If you believe in the awe and the wonder, well, that's God. I don't consider you an atheist. Nyad was as political as possible and handled herself well, not that it would have taken a Herculean effort to highlight what a derogatory bitch Oprah was being there, but Nyad did fine. She killed her with kindness, and that was probably the smartest way to handle it. That being said, I'd have gone another way. When Oprah said, well, I don't consider you an atheist, then I'd have answered back with, well, if you think women should be allowed to speak in public, I don't consider you a Christian. But luckily, all that matters is what you consider yourself, right? Now, it got worse. Nyad admitted that, hey, maybe she's wrong. And rather than concede that she too could be wrong, Oprah agrees that, yes, Diana Nyad might be wrong. And then she goes on to explain how distressing that was going to be when she died and burned for eternity in hell. And to her credit, Nyad played along. I'd have probably answered back with something like, yeah, but I suppose it's just as likely that you and I will both be standing in front of Allah or Ganesha or some long-forgotten Irish pagan god, and then we're both fucked, right? But most likely none of the prehistoric civilizations were able to circumvent centuries of scientific research and chance upon an unverifiable truth about the origins of the cosmos by sitting around on mushrooms and staring into a fucking bonfire. You know, I've already talked plenty about the awe of atheism on this show, and I don't want to rehash it all here, but I will say this. When I look up at the sky, I see billions of years of stellar transformation. When Oprah looks up at the sky, she sees a wizard who likes shiny lights. When I look at my own hand, I see trillions of generations of evolution that connect me to every organism that lives or has ever lived. When Oprah looks at her hand, she sees a wizard who needed something that would fit around the banana. When I look at the mountains, I see a complex and exciting geological history writ large before me. She sees a wizard who figured the earth wasn't lumpy enough. As atheists, we stand in awe of a lot of things, but perhaps the thing I'm most in awe of is the stupidity it takes to look past the entire universe of things that actually exist and stand in awe of something that doesn't.